Why hello there, Anxious Cynic back again with another Minimator tutorial. So this is something I've been noticing in some uh, animations that I've seen and I thought it was something that would be cool to address and that is how to add like the player names over your character as well and more importantly maybe uh, the speech bubbles or subtitles or whatever you would have if they're talking. So what I have here is a basic little animation that I put together relatively quickly and uh, it's just Steve walking up and he waves and he says a few words. So the first thing we're gonna do is add the player name. So that's pretty easy. I'm sure a lot of you can figure this out, but we'll just cover it for the sake of it. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and create a text element here and we're gonna rename this. I'm just gonna call it Steve tag because we're using the Steve here and his name is gonna be Steve or something like that. Okay, so easily we're just gonna take this and we're gonna drag it on over the Steve thing there and pairing it to his character. And we wanna move it into position so we're just gonna go ahead and bring it up like so. And uh, it's really not that much more to it. I typically probably wouldn't want it to be that big so I'm gonna bring it down about to 0.5 and I think it's about like 36 at that point is uh, kind of a good height level in my opinion to that so you can leave it like that uh, but another thing that you could do is turn on the face camera so that no matter where you're facing the uh, name faces you which I think would kind of make it seem a little bit more like it's within the game or something like that but it's you know really up to you so uh, with that we're gonna go ahead and play it and as you can see there's his dang old name and he walks up and everything is good to go. Steve's all happy and he's named and everybody knows who he is. Very social creature. So now if we want to go ahead and have Steve talking, we need to have some speech bubbles or something. So one thing that I have seen is people will actually, let's just go ahead and duplicate this one over here in the library and then we're going to pop it on into the scene here. And uh, we're gonna go ahead, I guess, and parent this to Steve as well. That way we don't have to keep up with where our text elements are in the scene. And I'm gonna turn off face camera on this one, at least for now. I'm not sure if you'd want that up all the time or not, but for now we're just gonna leave it off. And I'm gonna bring it over here. I'm just gonna bring it out a little bit, something like that, and eh, maybe a little bit lower, something like that. And we probably want this to be a little bit bigger maybe, so let's go about 0.75, I don't know. We can try 0.5 for now, it's not that big of a deal. So we're just gonna put it there and voila, there's your text. Let's just name this one uh, speech underscore one, something like that, I don't know. Whatever you wanna name it. And uh, from here we could just have them, you know, say hi and save because we're OCD about saving. And uh, of course this is kind of moved over here so we may wanna bring it a little bit closer and stuff like that and then we could just have that and then we would say duplicate this and then rename this one speech two and it would say i'm steve all right and then we may need to move this over a little bit because that's a bigger text and then basically what we would do is go back to the very front of the animation and i'm double clicking into these timelines to set a new keyframe and i'm going to turn off visibility I'm gonna do that for this one and for this one and then when we come up here the first thing he's gonna say is hi maybe right around here and we're gonna have it become visible there and then wherever we want that to become invisible because we don't want to see it anymore then we'll just toggle that off and at that same point we may want him to say the other one or we may want it to delay so we can bring that out a bit and basically what you would get then, is he walks up, he says, hi, I'm Steve, just like that. And uh, you can control like when those things come up and how long they last on screen and all that stuff. You typically want to leave text on the screen uh, a little while, it's kind of hard to get that balance up. I've heard some suggest that you should leave it on for as long as it takes you to read it or say the phrase three times. So if you went, to uh, this point, let's just start it here on this keyframe. And if you went high, 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 then right about there is where you would want it to be, maybe around that 140 mark. And we could have this come up to where like it's instantly high, it's transitions to I'm Steve, or like I had it before where it comes up after a short delay. Anyway, 
that's pretty much how you could do it and it'd be pretty easy to do it that way. Uh, one of the issues I have noticed uh, here though is a lot of uh, people obviously are using a scene, you have schematics and you know, Steve is in some kind of environment. There could be a tree or a building or something. And a lot of the ones I've seen, the text will actually go behind things and whatnot where you can't actually read it. And that, of course, defeats the purpose of having subtitles at all. So you can do it like this, but you have to make sure that it stays within the range of the camera so that the viewers can see and read the text so they know what your characters are trying to say. So I highly recommend keeping up with that. Another thing here is if I turn on rendering on our camera, the text here is not very uh, good. It's not very visible or whatever. So let me go ahead and select this. We can bring up the brightness, which is pretty much what you would want to do. But you may have to be careful with this if you use the glare feature. So if I turn this on, let's turn our bloom actually. Uh, let's turn up the bloom a little bit and get this something like that you'll have the text kind of reacting with that as well i'm not really sure how you would avoid this other than just not using bloom altogether but uh that's something you'll definitely want to keep in mind For some reason i can't click on this in the uh 3D view here. Anyway, you may want to have this turned up for all of your text so that that way the lighting is not affecting your text. You want that to be kind of stand out on the screen. If you do want it to kind of, you know, be part of the scene, then you can leave that turned down. Um, it's really up to you, I suppose, but you may want to bring up the brightness at least somewhat so that it's not as affected by the lighting of the scene. So that would be pretty much it. That's how you could get the uh, little text bubbles coming up there or whatever. Obviously, I don't have a background like a speech bubble, but there's another way that you could do this that I'm going to try to show in a moment. Uh, but another thing you could do is if you wanted to actually do this as subtitles, what I could do, let's just go ahead and parent this to the camera. We can actually parent this text element here to the camera itself. And uh, it's kind of backwards at this point, so we'll need to rotate that. Let's go ahead and just give it 180 degrees and we're gonna bring it up like so. And it kind of depends on how you want this to work. Uh, we may need to scale it down a bit more since it's actually attached to our camera. We don't need it to be quite as big and we can have this kind of popping up here like so. Let's actually just uh, have that zeroed out. Let's just say we leave it in the middle. What I may want to do if I do this, however, is turn off cast shadows on our text because this is kind of simulating adding subtitles to the screen rather than it being part of the scene. So you can parent these text elements to that. Let's go ahead and duplicate this and uh, let's go ahead and get rid of these such as that. And this one is going to have a different text. So it's going to be like, I hate my life dot 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 or also known as ellipses i think anyway uh so let's go ahead and bring this up get away from that icon so we can actually see what he's dang old trying to say steve's got messages and things he wants to tell us stuff all right sorry about that guys i had to fix that up that was kind of a little blooper there i messed up my uh, stuff but i got it all fixed now so now what you get is he comes up and he says hi I hate my life and it's all like right there on the screen and you can see it and it's clear and perfect and uh, we're not going to cast shadows so it's not actually going to be part of the scene and you can do like some legit subtitles on the screen there and it'll be very clear and easy to read for your audience and whatnot. So that's how you can do that one. I would definitely recommend keeping up with the scale and the position here because you don't may not want it to be that big or whatever. If you're typing more text than that, you may want to uh, have it smaller on the screen and move around. So you have to customize this a bit and uh, have to be careful not to accidentally move it uh, across the screen if you don't want it to be moving anyway. So if I move this, if I needed it to be, you know, a longer text, segment or something then I could accidentally kind of do that so you want to make sure you don't accidentally set any unwanted keyframes and change the position so there you go that's a couple of ways uh, to do text you can have it be part of the scene next to your character or you can actually parent it to the camera typically if I was going to do subtitles like this I would just do it in my video editor rather than in my animator but that's kind of a cool way you could do it if you're all just wanting to go all in on my animator and not use anything else so uh yeah, there is that. 
Another way that you can do it though, let's go ahead and hop into an image editor. All right, so here we are in GIMP, and as you can see here, I have this image. I basically just made a black border, and I made this uh, little bit here, like a little arrow where the speech bubble's coming out, and I colored this interior in white, and I wrote the word, or typed the word, hi, dot, dot, dot. All right, so uh, I've already saved this, but uh, the way I'm gonna do this is, say you have this image and you've saved it out, and now you wanna come back, uh, you know, you would reopen this or keep this open in GIMP or whatever your video editor is and uh, you would have your default just speech bubble maybe with no text and uh, you would just change the text. Uh, I don't know, I'm not going to cover exactly how I did this and how this all works. Hopefully if you have some basic understanding of GIMP or whatever photo editor or uh, graphics software you use, you kind of know how to do a basic little shape like this and text. If not, then maybe... Uh, you can search up a tutorial on that that's more specific to how to use GIMP or whatever software you use. In any case, you're just going to have a basic image like this. Uh, I, I may supply it in the description of this if you guys want to download this if you like it for whatever reason. So let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can do that. Because I don't know if I'll just do it just on my own. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to change this text. So I'm going to backspace and I'm going to have him say, I'm Steve. How are you? question mark all right and i want to go ahead and up the size of this i'm just gonna whoa not that much come on we want to make it sure it fits here something like that and i could reposition this and whatnot but i'm not going to worry about that for now i'm going to go ahead and export this all right guys so back in minimator i went ahead and got rid of some of our text so we can see a little bit better and what i'm going to do with this one is i'm actually going to bring in a surface object and I'm going to create it and here we go so what I want to do is bring this over something like that like so don't really know for sure let's go ahead and save and uh, I'm probably actually going to parent this to Steve that's uh, typically what we've been doing right and uh, since Steve is still at zero it didn't mess up the positioning here so that's good and what I want to do actually is I'm going to go into the project properties and I could have set the texture here. I could go here and browse and bring in the texture that I want. I'll go ahead and do that for the first one. So you go to browse under the library. Let's go ahead and make sure we cover all this under the library. Going to go to our surface object, go to texture, browse. And here I am. I navigated to my folder where my images are and I'm going to go ahead and click on the first one and bring it in. And there it is. And as you can see, the uh, surface object is kind of square. So I may want to readjust the position here, maybe 0.75, something like that. That gives me the shape of what I saved out of GIMP. And we have this nice little speech bubble here. I don't know if it really looks the best, but it's a speech bubble and it's got text in it. So now let's say if I want to change that, I don't have to necessarily go here. Let's say I've made, like I have a script and I went ahead and made all of my speech bubbles in my, you know, graphics program, uh, photo editor, whatever. And I want to import them all at once. I can go over here to the resources section of the project properties and I can click on this button here, which is add a new resource from a file. I can click on that and I could actually select these individually and bring them in just like so. And it's gonna ask me what this is. This happens to be a texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay on that. And now I have this new texture as part of my project, but it didn't actually do anything. It just added that texture to my project file. So what I can do now is come in here to this and let's say Steve comes up and I want this. Let's go ahead and set a keyframe. We're gonna go to the very back here. I'm gonna tell this to not be visible. And then when he comes up, he's gonna say hi. And then at this point, let's actually bring that up just a bit. And then we're gonna set another keyframe for when we want the next text element to come up. Let's go ahead and save. And I'm gonna come over here. This may be uh, not set uh, by default, but if you click on this, it'll bring it down where you can alter the texture. So I'm gonna click this and it should show any other textures I have in my project or my scene. As you can see here, Steve, how are you is here? And I'm gonna select this. And there you go. There's the texture on our surface. So now if we watch this, It comes up, hi, I'm Steve, how are you? And you could do that so that way you don't have all of these different text elements 
uh, you can actually just have this one surface and you can come here and keyframe the texture with all of your pictures. You know, this could just be text elements. You don't have to have the whole border background and all this stuff. You could just type text and save it as an image and make that the texture with just a transparent background and whatnot like you normally would other things. Uh, so it's really up to you what you're wanting to do with this. But that's another way you could do it, and that way you can have all of your text elements as part of your scene, but they're not going to be cluttering up your timeline or anything like that. You can just keyframe them on your surface timeline to show up when you want them to. So that's it guys, those are like two or three different ways that you can have text come up in your animations. I hope it was helpful, I hope I didn't uh, skim over anything too much. I know I didn't cover every little aspect, but I wanted to try to cover all these different options you have at your disposal disposal in one video so i hope it was helpful hope it was inspiring in some way if you like this video feel free to hit the like button comment and subscribe to become a citizen today share it with your friends and your family and your pets and i will see you in the next video